ProSoft Connect is a cloud-native platform for the industrial Internet of Things, allowing users to access their automation devices from anywhere in the world. It offers highly secure and reliable remote access that acts as a direct connection to the local switch with your equipment. It's also easy to use and requires no software installation. Let's say you need to remotely access a PLC, get online and make some edits to your program, and you have our ICX35 cellular gateway connected to the Ethernet network that your PLC is on. In this video, we'll see how you can do this with ProSoft Connect. In this diagram, you can see my PC, the ICX35, and my PLC with all their respective IP addresses. We'll go through the process of setting up ProSoft Connect for the first time. This will entail getting an account from ProSoft.io, activating our ICX35 cellular gateway, using the management features to configure our gateway, and setting up the connection to a virtual private network, or VPN. We will then use the VPN tunnel to connect to a PLC on a remote subnet. Note that we have a separate training video focused on setting up and configuring the ICX35 cellular gateway that we recommend you watch. Let's begin. To start, I'll open up a web browser and go to www.prosoft.io. This is where you can sign up to start using the ProSoft Connect service. Or if you already have an account, this is where you go to log in and use Connect to access your remote devices. I'll click Sign Up Now. This will walk me through the process of creating an account for Connect. I'll enter my name, an email, and other information, and click Sign Up. I'll get an email at the address that I entered, and I'll click the link, and this will finalize the account creation process with me creating a password. And my account is all ready. And as you can see, when logging in for the first time, there is a tour of the interface that you can take. A chat window telling you about the chat support feature also pops up, and we'll talk more about that later. If you look over on the left side of the interface, we have a menu bar with our gateways, which we have zero of at the moment. We have the team section where we can view and edit all the team members who have access to this account. It's just me now. But I can add team members by clicking on the Invite Team Members button in the upper right corner. This opens a box where I can enter the email address of the person that I want to add. I can also edit the content of the message if I choose. And when I click Send Invite, this person will get an email similar to what I got when I was setting up the account. They will create their own password and then be able to log in and they'll show up in this section. Getting back to the menu bar, there's also an activity section where you can see a log of activities for all devices associated with this account. There's nothing to see here now, but we'll come back at the end of the tutorial and have a look. So, I have an account and I'm logged in. Now I need a cellular gateway to connect to. At this point, I will connect my ICX35 gateway to my computer and log in to its configuration web page. This is separate from the login credentials for the ProSoft Connect, by the way. Once I'm logged in, I'll go to the Administrator tab, go down to ProSoft Connect. Here you can see there's a button to activate ProSoft Connect. Click that, a window will pop up with a numerical code. This is the activation key. Copy that, close the window, and we'll jump back into ProSoft Connect to complete the activation process. To do this, I'll click the Activate Gateway button in the upper right corner here. A window will pop up asking you to enter the device activation key. This is the numerical key that we just got from activating an ICX35 from its web page. Paste the code in and click Activate. The ICX35 will now show up in our Gateways view. I can access the Gateways configuration options by clicking its name in the Tile view. So on the Overview tab, which comes up, I have stats on the performance of my Gateway and some additional information over on the right side here. I click on the Gateway tab, you can see all of the configuration parameters available to us. 
I can give it a new name here. I can enter the APN, some location coordinates. I can see its LAN IP address, and this is the address assigned to the ICX35's LAN port. I'll enable the data limit tracking feature, and I'll take a look at the access tab where we can configure the properties of the web interface. The VPN type, you actually only need to use this if you're going to use an external VPN server. We can change the username and password to log into the ICX35 web page, and we can set our tunneled client IP address. This is where we tell ProSoft Connect what IP address to give our PC on the remote network once we have created the tunnel. So this is the IP that our PC uses on the subnet with the PLC. Be sure to use an IP that you know is available on that subnet. And there's also an activity tab that logs all the activity for this gateway specifically. Now if you do make any changes to the configuration options for the gateway, you'll notice that the apply button in the upper right corner will activate and a number will appear next to it. And this is the number of unapplied edits made to the gateway configuration. And if you click on the number, you can see what edits to the configuration are queued up. You have to click the apply button before those edits will go into effect. The gateway will then go through a reboot and all of your edits will be applied. Now we'll take a look at the other views of our gateway list. So we have the tile view here. I can also go to the map view to see the location of each device in the world. And the table view is simply a list. So if you have a lot of gateways, this might be the easiest way to sort through them. Any devices that you have activated on this account will be visible in these views. Once you've activated a gateway, connected to it, you probably want to connect some other devices on the remote network. In my case, I have a PLC on a remote site on a subnet that my computer, with its internet connection alone, cannot access. Now in this scenario, once I've activated the ICX35 gateway on my account, it would then be taken to the location where the PLC is situated and physically plugged into the network there. So with that done, I would click the connect button on the gateway. This will generate a VPN session. If I have not already set a tunneled IP address for my PC, it will prompt me to set one now. Again, this will be the IP address that my PC will use on the remote network via the VPN. And note that this is a one-time only setup for connecting to this gateway. Once we go through this process, we won't have to worry about this again. I'll click Save and Connect. And at this point, I'll be issued a unique username. The name is randomly generated and unique every time you connect. I'll highlight the name and click Copy to Clipboard. We'll need this ID to complete the VPN connection. This will be a Layer 2 VPN session, creating a connection that works the same as if you're plugged directly into the switch with the equipment that you're accessing. At this point, I will need to set up a VPN client on my computer that will allow me to create a VPN tunnel to the ICX35. And we'll be using a native Windows VPN client. This is actually part of the Windows operating system. We can set it up without downloading or installing anything. So we'll walk through the process using a tutorial that is built right into ProSoft Connect. So on my gateway, I'll select Set Up VPN Client. This will open a window where we have the option to use the Quick Setup, wherein we download a batch file that will whisk us through the process or you can follow a list of instructions. I'll select Initial Configuration. A series of screens will walk me step-by-step step through the process of setting up a VPN client for the Connect, including the specific IP address to use and the type of VPN client to choose. Again, this process is only necessary the first time we make the connection. Once you have a VPN client set up, go to your computer's network connections, find your VPN client, click on it, 
and connect. Next, I'll paste the unique ID into the username field and hit connect. You don't need to worry about the other fields. I should now be connected to the remote network over VPN. I can verify this by the banner that appears at the top of the connect page. Looking at my gateway on the gateways page, I can also see the little VPN icon is now active. And if I hover over this with my mouse cursor, I can see that the gateway is connected and my PC is also connected. So what's happened here is that ProSoft Connect has connected to the VPN server and assigned my PC the IP address that I specified earlier on that remote subnet. So now, if I enter the IP address of the bridge module in my PLC, its web page comes right up, as if I'm plugged into its local switch, and I can actually program it remotely. If I open the RS links, I can set up a connection just as I would with a controller on my local network. I don't have any drivers set up to connect to the subnet where the PLC is. So I'll go up to communications and select configure drivers. I'll grab an ethernet IP driver and I'll give it a name. It then asks me what connection I want to use. And in the window, you should be able to see ProSoft Connect as an option. The IP address associated with it is an address on the subnet that my PLC is on. That is what I want to use. I'll click OK and close the window. So I now have a new Ethernet driver that will go out over ProSoft Connect to the ICX35 gateway and then to the local area network that my PLC is using. If I expand that, I can see my PLC right there. So if I wanted to make a change to the program, I could fire up RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000 and go to Who Active, Connect, and make any edits that I need. In addition, any other Rockwell Automation Ethernet IP devices on this subnet will also show up in my view here, and I would have access to them as well. Once you're finished, you can go back to the ProSoft Connect page, go to My Gateways, and click Disconnect. At this point, the unique user ID that I've been using to access the VPN tunnel and connect to the PLC is no longer valid. If I wanted to reconnect, I'll have to create a new session with a new unique user ID. I'll open up the activity section and look at the log events. So now we can see here when the gateway was added, when the VPN connection was made, and when the connection was closed. Any other changes made to the gateway, such as changing the name, the login credentials, any of the IP addresses or other settings would also be logged here. And you can also see what user applied the changes. A few other helpful features that I can point you toward. This is the help button here, and it will walk you through some of the most common activities that you might want to use Connect for, such as activating a gateway, setting up a VPN client, or inviting team members. There's also a support button over here on the sidebar. If you click on that, a chat window will open up and you can communicate with our support staff. If you have questions, you can just type them in here and you'll get answers. This is persistent, by the way. So if you ask a question and then log off and close the browser, the next time you sign into your Connect account, your question and any response that you've received from tech support will be there. And you can pick right up where you left off. And just so you know, our support staff only see the text. They can't see your screen and they don't have access to your account. And that does it for this training session. If you have any questions or would like more information, feel free to contact us. Happy training.